Welcome to Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drogheda. Yesterday we began looking at the Christmas carol, O Holy Night. And we explained how it was not even, the words were not even written initially by a Christian at all, but by an atheist wine seller who was invited to uh, write a celebratory poem by his friend, the parish priest in Rockmar in France, who was rededicating some stained glass windows after some renovations in the church building. And, and how he wrote a song that basically laid bare the hypocrisy of church leadership that pursued political political power and lived in great wealth whenever it was supposed to be about the Son of God being born in a, in a lowly stable in Bethlehem. And the song became uh, wildly popular and then was suppressed by the established church because it was viewed as being subversive and not as having any true Christian spirit in it whatsoever. But that was not the end of the story. Uh, as you know, in the 19th century, uh, there was the Christian abolitionist movement against slavery, both uh, in Britain under William Wilberforce, but also in uh, the United States through, uh, well, authors like Har Harriet Beecher Stowe, who wrote uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and uh, many, many committed Christians who led the fight against slavery uh, in North America. And one of those abolitionists was called John Sullivan Dwight. And he came across this, this French song that had been suppressed by the church there. And he was struck by the lines that said, the Redeemer has broken every bond. The earth is free and heaven is open. He sees a brother where there was only a slave. Love unites those whom iron had chained. Because in the abolitionist movement in Britain, one of, the, one of the most powerful images was a brooch that was designed by Josiah Wedgwood of the Wedgwood Pottery Company that showed uh, an African slave kneeling in chains and said, am I not a man and a brother? And this idea that the slave is our brother was a powerful force in the abolitionist argument. And so John Sullivan Dwight, seeing the same uh, thing, he sees a brother where there was only a slave, took this French song and basically uh, reworked it in the English language. And these are the words he came up with. O oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining till he appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Fall on your knees, oh, hear the angel voices, O oh, night divine, O oh, night when Christ was born. And the emphasis here was very much on the fact that where there had been darkness, now there was coming light. And that was very much the, how the abolitionists felt, that the darkness of slavery was about to be released by the, or be relieved by the light of freedom for all men. The next verse, led by the light of faith serenely beaming, with glowing hearts by his cradle we stand, so led by light of a star sweetly gleaming, here come the wise men from the Orient land. The King of Kings lay thus in lowly manger, in all our trials, born to be our friend. He knows our need and to our weaknesses no stranger. Behold your King before him lowly bend. And, and then this is what John Sullivan Dwight did with those words about the slave being the brother. Truly he taught us to love one another. His law is love and his gospel is peace. Chains shall he break, for the slave is our brother. And in his name all oppression shall cease. Sweet hymns of joy in grateful chorus raise we. Let all within us praise his holy name. Christ is the Lord. Oh, praise his name forever, his power and glory forever proclaim. And what, what he did was he took the verse about the slaves being released from their chains, but said it very much that this was part and parcel of the reason why Jesus 
came to earth. And that song became wildly popular among the abolitionist movement and eventually it became a Christmas standard so that really it would be part of, of most self-respecting carol services nowadays. Now funnily enough, even today there are verses, versions of that where people omit the verse, the third verse about the slave being our brother. And that's a real shame because the abolitionist cause was a Christian cause and it was Bible believing Christians that got slavery abolished in the end. Just one more thing about this song. Whenever a guy called Reg Reginald Fessenden working for the Marconi Company figured out that by putting two radio frequencies together, you could actually broadcast not just Morse code, but you could broadcast speech and even music. Uh, Reginald Fessenden basically staged the first ever radio broadcast of speech. And it was on Christmas Eve in 1906. And he read from Luke chapter two, and then his colleague played the melody to O Holy Night on a violin. And so this Christmas carol went down in broadcasting history as the first ever piece of music to be broadcast over the airwaves and many times since. Thank you for joining us today. Join us next time for another Take 5, your five-minute inspirational message from Solid Rock Drogheda.